it, we, we came and had a look at it yesterday, it's a Scotia. But of course, today is also another day, and today is World Animal Day, and we've decided to celebrate World Animal Day with leopard. And look what we've got lying underneath this tree right now. There you go. That is young Hosanna. For those of you who don't know who Hosanna is, it's a young male leopard, uh, probably now about, ooh, don't quite know how old it is, probably about 16 to 18 months old, and fully independent of his mom, so he's a young adult, and he's just enjoying the late afternoon breeze on top of this termite mound and the shade of this giant old man that is the Scotia above him. And not a care in the world and of course it had to be him that had to celebrate World Animal Day with us just have a look at that camouflage on top of this termite mound you know there's not a stitch of vegetation on top there and if you weren't carefully looking you'd almost miss him for sure and we are parked about 30 yards away from him at the moment and he doesn't have a worry. Fast asleep again. There was an elephant that were walking past him and he lifted up his head to see what the elephant were doing and that is how I spotted him. That very distinctive sort of clubbed profile of a leopard or a lion or that a leopard and a lion has. Oh he's looking good. This is the first time I'm seeing Hosanna. Um, let me just think if it's the first time I've ever seen Hosanna actually. I want to say that this is the first time I'm seeing this particular leopard. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I may have seen Karula's cubs once, perhaps twice before, but I doubt it. I haven't taken a vehicle game drive in Juma for a very, very long time. And of course, seeing leopard on foot is difficult. I think the last time I saw, actually haven't seen him, I saw, no, I did see him on foot once. It must be the second or third time I'm seeing him. I'm just trying to think back. It's just incredible, actually. I'm very happy that he came out to celebrate with us today. Remember, this is an interactive show. Please ask us some questions. If you want to know a little bit more about Leopard, or you've, had, you've heard something, or you want to share a story from an encounter you had when you were visiting Africa, perhaps, or dreaming of leopards, please go right ahead. Use Twitter and YouTube. We'll monitor those questions and, uh, and we'll answer those we can. Now I see his paws are getting big as well. He's turning into a good looking cat, wow. Now, <clears throat> currently he's not sexually mature. That'll only happen from about two and a half years old. And he'll only really be able to fight for females from about five to seven years old. But at about two and a half years old, he's going to start to antagonize the two dominant male leopard that hold sway over this area. Leopard territories are fluid like an amoeba and it's their, their boundaries sort of ebb and flow with the seasons and with each leopard's condition. And uh, there are two male leopard that hold sway over this area, a leopard called um, Tingana and another leopard called Mvula both of which are not the youngest leopard anymore. I think they got, I think they still got some pluck in them. One of which is, is, uh, is his father, this particular leopard's father. And uh, there's a very good chance at this, uh, at this point that, uh, that he just inherits the area, uh, this area from one of his, from one of these big male leopards. It's a very fine line between when a leopard becomes too old to effectively patrol their territory, in particular from their son. And while under normal circumstances, uh, this young leopard will be forced out and into a life, a nomadic lifestyle for about two and a half to three years, which gets them far away from their natal range. From time to time, as is the case now, a young male cub will be maturing and getting into their prime as their father is exiting theirs. And it's going to be quite interesting to see over the next couple of years exactly what that means. Next couple of months, in fact. Exactly what that means for young Hosanna. Is he going to stick around? Is he not going to stick around? A year from now, are we still going to be seeing him? Will he start to actively defend a small territory of his own inside 
his father's and Mvula's territory. There's all these unknowns. Right now, the sunlight falling on his coat there, isn't that fantastic? Nice surprise. I'm glad you're all enjoying it. Louise, who's directing the show on this side today, says that everybody's commenting on the fact that it's so lovely to see him again. It is very nice. A gray cloud behind him with the sunlight on his shoulders is the herald of summer to come. Now, <coughs> leopard will sleep uh, during the day. They don't always sleep during the day. Uh, and that's because unlike lion, which are sort of, we cooperatively hunt with each other. Leopard don't, and very similar to every other house cat or cat that you've ever taken any sort of uh, notice of, they have moments when they'll sleep and do nothing, and they also have moments when they don't. And it all is related to him and a territory, or, um, or basically what type of, uh, how hungry he is, in other words, and doesn't look like he's too hungry, this guy. I actually just want to see if there's not a kill lying in this tree somewhere. Really, if you scan decently all the branches that sort of look like they can harbor a decent sized kill, we might be lucky to see something. You can see that his belly has got a slight bulge to it, and it's not because something's pushing it from underneath. He's actually got some food in there. Now, a leopard at this age although very skilled at hunting and uh, he would be living on a very wide range of things now from lizards to eggs to fish even birds impala steenbuck diker um, not quite taking massive things just yet that's in the realm of the older leopard you know things like buffalo calves and kudu and things like that but it's going to be interesting to see as well over the years to come what type of hunter he will become what what will he prefer to eat quite nice all right james henry is waiting to say hello to you all so i'm going to stay here with uh, young hosana and announce his presence on the radio and james will say hello ah we're going to cancel that because james's picture is gone which is also not too much of a worry these things happen when live so as James is moving, of course, he's moving between trees and rocks and bushes and whatnot, and sometimes the signal gets cut off, and uh, we manage to stop that. So we'll go to James's in a little bit and leaves us some more time with this leopard. Now, going over to the activity periods, as he gets older, he'll get a character, and that character will be defined by uh, his experiences, uh, but it'll also be defined uh, by by his by his mother to a degree um, and although it's not as clearly defined as in lion my point is, is that lions in a pride will learn how to hunt uh, something in their area and they'll become very good at it where it, whether it's zebra or wildebeest or buffalo or even elephant in some cases leopard will learn some things from their mom but the thing that they will specialize in eventually is exp is 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 experientially learnt. Um, some old male leopard will enjoy hunting aardvark, warthog, some male leopard will learn how to hunt buffalo, some male leopard like male leopard called quarantine from a few years ago, a distant brother to this one, learnt how to hunt kudu and would hunt full-grown female kudu, many many times bigger than what he is. bush lovers you've asked me an interesting question is it is it possible to identify a leopard kill on the ground if it's not in the tree and obviously if the leopard's not present um, that's a good question because in areas outside of the game reserves where leopards are a little bit less common um, and also smaller they hunt a, v a, a much more varied diet and it's made up of smaller things so quite often you'll find something under a bush and it's quite difficult to tell which of the cats 
killed it. Now obviously tracks are one thing. Uh, you can distinguish a kill by using tracks of the animal. So that would be my first thing. Secondly is where the animal uh, bit, uh, you know, where was the death bite? Across the, the throat uh, is quite common for leopard to do uh, and caracal on the back of the head, caracal and serval. Um, yeah, that is a good question. I would say that the only definitive answer would be really would be the tracks. You'd need to find yourself a track and then decide whether it was a small leopard or a large caracal, uh, in my opinion. And obviously leopard tracks are much bigger than what those other smaller cats are. Good question there.